Hello community, I hope you are doing good in this discussion. We will see how to create a float field and in case you missed previous discussion about how to create an integer field, please check link is given in the description. And if you want to learn more about Odoo, you can visit the Weblands channel. Under the home screen, you can see Odoo 17 development tutorial is here. And right now we are working on this Odoo 17 fields development tutorial. And this is the main playlist of the Odoo 17. If you want to continue to start your career in Odoo 17, then this is the main playlist. You can start and those are the sub playlist. All right. So, and another thing is if you want to learn more about Odoo with the older version, you can see Odoo development. And here you can see different types of playlist available with the different topic wise with the real test cases. So let's back to our main topic and before that guys if you didn't subscribe this channel please subscribe it will motivate me and also it will help me a lot in the future all right so here we are going to create one float field so for that as you already know like we created one simple student module under the models.py file here we are going to create one more field okay so let's say student underscore fees you can relate with this field name right fields dot float now here this fields right this keyword you have to import from the odoo like this from odoo import and fields and after that you can use here fields dot and then after the float make sure the f would be the capital and let's say each and every fields which you mention right the first character would be always the capital now our float field is ready and now i'm going to display in the view field name like this and here i'm going to upgrade the module so i will upgrade from the pycharm terminal minus u and the student in case guys you didn't know how to configure Odoo in PyCharm like this way please check editor level playlist I already explained once I will restart the service so it will automatically upgrade the module so here first thing is I'm going to student profile right right now you can see here it's a unique number and which is the integer field right and now I will refresh the screen you can see student fees is available and now you can see the difference is this is integer field and this is the float field so float field having a decimal points right you can say uh, let's say in the unique number right let's say i want to use 4.5 so that's not possible okay you can see once i will click to save it will give me the red alert because this is purely integer value but let's say you want to store such value right 5.5 like that then you can use here like this and so another thing is let's say if you are typing non in numeric value right it will having the action let's say you can also store as an integer but the difference is would automatically manage the zeros okay now uh, let me start the developer mode so let's say i'm going to settings technical and decimal accuracy right here you can see uh, there are seven accuracies there you can see that uh, digits supported like let's say the six records having a two decimal points and for the payment terms it's having the six decimal points so what it is right let's see one by one so let's say you can see here by default it's a two right let's say you want to also increase this decimal accuracy right then you can either configure from here or you can use your own here so there is a two points you have to remember either you can use the configurable right or you can use your own so let's first use this one the existing one which is available in Odoo, right so for that here in this float fields you have to use here one attribute so that name is the digits all right in the double quote let's say i will use this name all right payment terms 
simple i will upgrade the module restart the service and refresh the screen oh sorry not this one but this one now you can see how many decimal is there one two three four five and six why because you can see the payment terms having the six decimal points but let's say if i will use the discount right so discount having a two only so let's say i'm using here discount and refresh the screen oh sorry not here but here you can see only two decimal points is there let's say so this is the thing and let's say if you want to change right the points the decimal points let's say in a discount uh, I, I want only f uh, for the four digit right so here once I will refresh the screen you can see the four points but not in the four points in the student fees but here in the invoices right let's say if you see here the discount you can see here the four digits also available here so this is a global you can say the configuration and once i will refresh the screen now you can see two decimal points right and yeah it will give you also sometimes the warning messages if, if you are decreasing the discount points right so i hope you understood the decimal point with the global configuration now let's talk about the custom configuration which is only configurable for this field only not the global configuration all right so for that you can use here the same digit digits right and in the tuple you have to provide like four digit and what is the, and after comma you have to provide the decimal points like how many so let's say one at the moment okay and i will restart the service and refresh the screen and now you can see now it's not a global configuration right you can see the discount having a two but here you can see only one decimal point is available so this is the purpose of the digits okay let's talk about the inbuilt uh, default attributes so first attribute is the label here you can see i didn't specify any label name so it will take this field name but here the interesting part is you can see here student fees right but here we didn't apply anything here let's say we didn't apply here the space the s and f is the capital right you can see here so odoo automatically convert underscore to space and uh, all the words automatically convert into the first character as a capital and after it will display here now let's say if you want to change the label name right you can just apply here double quote right student total fees now once i will restart the service so instead of the student fees it will automatically display this level you can see here right and another thing is string in case you want to use the attribute name for the label you can use here string equal to and like this anything okay and now it will display this level you see now another one is the default so let's say default value you want to add right so here let's say 3.2 right and let's say once i will restart the service and refresh the screen you can see it's not updated why because the default attribute always would work with the new while you create a new record so once i click to this new button right so you can see 3.20 is automatically available so this is the purpose of the default okay let's say read only equal to one so you want to completely read only this field the restrict to edit this field 
you can use the read only and once you refresh the screen now you can see i am not able to change this number i can still change here this number but not this one see so this is the main purpose and another and interesting thing is the required required is the common one but let's see is it working or not right give me the first answer like is this working in this float field or not see it's not working why because it's automatically taking 0.00, .00. and auto trades okay it's already there and let's say in case you want to prevent this 00, zero right then you can do many ways you can extend the create or write method or you can apply the constraint or you can apply also the widget all these three combinations i will explain in our further sessions what it is okay but right now you have to focus here the float field only so in this case the required attribute is also not working same like the integer and the boolean field but here you can use the help command So what is the purpose of this field, right? Let me stop the debug mode. You can see here gender, advanced gender, right? There is no question mark is there. And now you can see in the student fees having this question mark. Once you hover, you can see that tool tick. So this is nothing in HTML terminology. You can say the tool tip for the specific field. So that is the main purpose here. All right. So let's talk about the and yeah, one more thing is the index. You can apply many indexes here, right? And it won't be work in the Python side or in the front end side. It's it's a technical part which is working in the Postgres side only. So in a Postgres side, you can see here it will create an index, right? We applied for the roll number and the student name so you can see here so like let's say index equal to true that means it will auto automatically create one index in the wb underscore student table so what is the purpose please find out the index concept in the postgres side okay i will not explain in this session but in our upcoming session i will specially take one session for the indexes now uh, let's see here string we can also override this string here let's say std fees right and in this case you have to compulsory upgrade the module because you are changing in the xml side refresh the screen and now you can see std fees right now read only equal to one and once i will refresh the screen now you can see this field automatically restrict to edit right and you can see the label also the color also change after that invisible equal to one so it means it will automatically hide this field in the in user interface you can see unique number right but std std fees is automatically hide another thing is no label so no label means it will automatically hide this label so once i will refresh the screen now you can see only the value would be visible but not the label you can see that label is automatically hide right And here, let's say plus holder. So plus holder automatically display here the content, the string content for the end user. Like what is the purpose of this field, right? So let's say if I will blank, now you can see it's having a some a readable message. Like what is the purpose of this field? Okay, either you can use here the help or you can use here this message while this field is blank after it will display here but let's say if, if you add anything here 
write any value then it will automatically hide so once you remove you can see like this okay so this is the main purpose of this float field i hope you understood how to create the float field and different how to manage also decimal points in the float field right if you have any doubt related to this topic please comment below and see you in our next session and our next session would be how to create a json field all right so see you there